Okay, so I know it's been a bit since I made a video, and I just recorded one, but I had to scrap it because it had that annoying buzzing in it. On the plus side, I did manage to figure out what it was. Um, I have this cable that goes into my um, lock mic, and if it doesn't have the grounding, which is this little cable wire wrapped around it, then I get a strong buzzing, whether or not that mic is on or not. In fact, if I disconnect this cable, my mic is no longer well grounded and I get the buzzing. Um, so I have to have this cable connected and grounded to make sure that I don't have that, that strong buzzing. Um, and I didn't hear it throughout the recording of that video because I was listening to the output of the mic, which doesn't have it for whatever reason. It's only once it's mixed out of the mic, because the mic I use, it's, um, uh, let me see if I can show you guys. It's a, uh, it mixes a bunch of different sources and, um, oh, sorry about the noise. So it's eh, this guy here and he's got a bunch of different sources and there's that, uh, lock mic cable there. Um, and I guess I have to, uh, have a good ground source so I don't get that buzzing. So anyways, uh, I moved my... Oh, I'm sorry about all this noise. I moved my headphones over to my um, camera's output, so now I can hear what everything is coming into the camera already mixed. Um, anyways, I had done, I had, uh, Bone in the Box had done a um, Master Lock Combo 2 videos on picking, you know, opening, decoding the, the Master Lock. So I had bought this one off Amazon. I had taken it out of the package and was trying to figure it out. And all is well because uh, I, I was doing it from memory and I missed one really important step. So it was like me fumbling around with this for 15 minutes, um, having missed that completely uh, important first step. Uh, before, so I'm going to try this some more now. Um, uh, now that I've watched that video again and, and remembered what that first step was. Uh, but. I haven't been doing a lot of picking lately, or pick, and that's why I haven't made any picking videos, um, because I've been, I, I got a bunch of these, I got like 30 of these best cores in, uh, SFICs, and none of them have keys. Um, I sent one over to Georgia Gym without a key, obviously, but I went ahead and decoded this one. Unfortunately, I decoded it backwards, um, because I, I picked up a lab annex, and it numbers one through seven this way. Whereas I'm always used to doing one through seven that way for my, p so I ended up cutting a control key backwards. Um, so that control key works nice and smooth on here. Um, and I cut it with one of those, you know, uh, clipping nippers and then I filed it down to the right height and it works beautifully. So then I end ended up having to make a backwards, um, uh, well, I mean, it, it's not backwards anymore, right? It's for this lock. But I don't know if this control key, if the, if all the different locks had the same control uh, key, because now the one I have is backwards to those. So I'll have to make another one and see if it works with all of them. Or open one up, I don't know. Anyways, um, they're riveted closed, which is uh, not so cool. I want to see if I can drill that out and put some screws in there on one of them. Um, but there's the operating key, works nicely. So I have a set of keys for this, which I like, um, but it did take a while and it makes me want to invest in a code cutting machine, but I don't know if I could justify something like that uh, for a hobby, right? Unless it's going to somehow make money. The other thing I've been working on is uh, Georgia Jim sent me this Medico M3 uh, that doesn't have a key, which I picked in a previous video. Um, so I ended up uh, learning how to use OpenSCAD um, which is basically a CAD program, you know, you, you write a, I guess, a program, and I produced uh, some keys, and I wanted to do this completely parametrically, where you t uh, put in your biddings, so not, you don't have to write in how many inches it is, you just say one, three, five, one, whatever your bidding is, and then the rotation, you know, central, left, right, and then uh, for, I think, the biaxial and the M3, you also have to say if the, um, bits are fore or aft, whereas the classic would just be original pins. Um, so you put that in, and then um, other things you put in is if it's an M3, if you M3, you say it's an M3, and you'll put this little channel in for pushing that side pin. Um, and you also put in 
what warding you have. So you just have to say left, I have a warding at this height, that height, that height, right, I have that, these different heights. So this was the first one I printed in PLA just to uh, see what my width is. It has no warding yet at this point. And um, then I went on to print one in PTG because I was afraid PLA might be kind of soft. So I made it a bit thinner because that one was too thick. Uh, again, no warding, um, just to see if it's the right size. It's good. Then I, then I introduced the warding to the thing. So that's with the warding, so that goes in. The problem is that the resolution or maybe I wasn't printing it. I was printing at 0 0.1, 0 0.1 millimeters per layer. And maybe I need to go down to 0.05. Um, but I was getting like uh, zits or whatever on here. So it wasn't going to work anyways with the rotation. But uh, just proof of concept to make sure I was getting the lift heights. I printed this ultra thin key to go in here and it gets the lift heights pretty good. Then um, I decided I need to print it on resin in order to get the, the good enough resolution. So I printed this, but I had adhesion problems at the end of the key, so I just broke that off and tested just these three pins, and that worked pretty nice, but I had switched around, uh, I think, right and center rotations in my programming, so it ended up printing the wrong rotations. Then I worked on getting some supports for the, but I still had adhesion issues at the, the tip there. Um, but I got this key, and this key lifted and rotated everything just right, but it's a bit soft. So I went and added a thing in the program that will print a long support for M3 keys, and I have to, I'll have to i print that next and see if that works. Um, and then I have this other resin that should be uh, stronger than this that I want to try. So it, I should be really close to producing that. I see a lot of people saying, you know, they did, they, they've made this key, that key, whatever, but I wanted mine to be fully parametric so it can make it for any uh, any Medico um, classic biaxial or M3, and I, I wanna put it up there for anybody to download that wants to make their own keys. It is a little tricky. I mean, you gotta figure out how to print with enough accuracy and stuff like that, but that's not part of, you know, that's, that's up to you to figure out your own printer. Um, anyways, onto this uh, combo lock. So, you have to turn it right at least three times to reset it. And what I was doing is you're supposed to lift up on this shackle and you're supposed to go just, if you do too much tension, you're gonna like lock up every few, just enough tension so that you only feel like one of the numbers, and I feel it right there, you bump up against one of the numbers. I feel a little bit clicking here, but that's really the one where it bumps up. Bump. If I let off tension even more, I can get rid of some of that clicking, but still get that bump. And I was taking, okay, I was taking six to be my first number, and what I, and then I was trying to figure out from there, I couldn't figure anything out. And what I went back to video, I realized I forgot, you're supposed to add five to that first one. So my first number is actually probably 11, not six. So I'm supposed to start at 11. So spin it right three times, go to 11, and now you have to go back around past 11 and then start finding the next number. But on your way there, you can start feeling for the, trying to get your tension just right. If you put too much tension, you're not gonna be able to rotate. So you want, and if you do too little, you're not gonna feel anything. So you want just enough that you're gonna bump over each of these, um, I've been pulling on this. You're gonna be bumping on each of these numbers and you want just the right amount. So you're bumping over them. And then we get to our, uh, around our 11. And then we're gonna field for the one that is harder to get past than the rest. It's like a brick wall. So I think it's there at about 26. 26, so 11, 26. Um, but let's try that again. It could be that my tension was no good. So I'm gonna start at 11, put my tension up. That's too much, it's too little. Okay, so I'm like, bumping along now I rode right past it and I get stuck here but I'm way past 11 again so that can't be right so let me start over so I can imagine this in, it, it takes quite a bit of feeling and oh I should have been uh, getting my tension right as I 
travel along. Oh, I thought I was stuck there at the 20. Now, uh, I can get past it, but it's like a bit more of a bump. I don't know if that's what I'm feeling for. I think that might be what I'm feeling for. Well, let's give it a try anyways. Maybe that's what it is. We'll go 11, and then I think I said 26. Oh, I should have been doing tension all the way. I get past it. I'm going to say it is. I don't know. It, it, I, would, I, don't, I didn't feel good about that. Maybe I'm going too fast. I don't like how I'm lifting the shackle each time. Bump it along. Click. Bump it. Bump it. Bump it. I cruise right past it. I cruise right past everything. I must not have the right tension. 11. Oh, I'm supposed to keep forgetting to use this opportunity of the first rotation to feel out my tension. I ride right past everything. I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know what I'm doing. Went up and picked this combo up, especially for this, because it just looked really fun. But obviously I haven't had enough practice. I'm going to just think it's 26, because that's the one that seems to give me the most, most problem or whatever, going back. Let's see, 26. And then you're supposed to take, uh, tw take away two to start. No. And then take away four and just keep taking away four until it opens or you get back to the number and then you know that that number wasn't, one of your numbers isn't right. Uh, 26, 24, 20, right? 16, 12, uh, eight. I'm gonna get all the way back. Four. Oh, we got open. All right, so uh, six, twenty-six, four. No, eleven, twenty-six, four. Pencil would be helpful, wouldn't it? Eleven. I got this big old piece of paper. Eleven, twenty-six, four. No. Isn't that what it was? 11. Go back around past 11 to, I think I said 26, and then back to 4. No. Well, it, it opened the shackle before. All right. 11. Was it not 26 that I was feeling before? Okay, maybe it was 27 I was feeling. So I think these are like tolerant to plus or minus one. So maybe the number is actually like 28. Um, so anyways, 11, 27, four. Yeah, so maybe the number is 28. And so when I was doing 26, it wasn't quite right, but 27 works. Um, so let's see, 11, 25, so 26 didn't work, but 27 worked. And then three. So what did I say? I was saying 11, and then I said 27. I went up higher, and four. 11, 27, four. So I was off by two and off by one. So 11, 25, and three. And that works. Is it harder to pull on the shackle when I do the numbers I did? 11, 27, and four. It doesn't open at all. But I just had it before, right? At least 11 was on the spot on. 
and 26 is the number I thought it was, but I th I went to, tw and now I went down to four. And it doesn't. What if I go down to three? Okay, so 25 minus two is 23, and then minus four times five is a four. So I mean that adds up, and because I went down to four. Wait, how did I get to 4? Because that would be 24, 20, oh, because it's 26. So I was 11, 26, 4. It worked for me the one time. Um, but it doesn't work consistently with the number that I can, that I decoded. 11, 26, and then 4. Didn't work. Uh, it works, but I, I feel like it does catch a little bit more. Uh, anyways, um, uh, I have that a uh, two bar from Georgia Jim uh, that I poked at a little bit. He wasn't sure it works right, so he gave me permission to drill a little hole in it and uh, open it up. And then I'm going to see if uh, I can decode it and maybe make a key for it. My milling machine is still down, um, so I'm going to have to figure that out. Um, but that might be what I work on after I get this Medico key working. Um, so maybe not, I might not have pick videos for a while still. I'm working on these uh, other little projects. I might do an impressioning video really soon. Um, people are bugging me to get my black belt, and that's all that's really standing in the way. Anyways, um, that's it. Uh, thanks.